election rigging. It's a phrase that probably makes you think of Russia, right? They hacked Hillary's emails, they launched online disinformation campaigns, and they even tricked Trump's dumbest son. <laughs> yeah, all the other Russian spies must have been so jealous of the one who got assigned Don Jr. Like, okay, I'm emailing him, do you want to collude? And he says yes. <laughs> now I use vacation days in Bermuda. <laughs> but as much as Russia may have worked to influence how Americans voted, America already has a system that invalidates many people's votes before they're even cast. Gerrymandering, the drawing and redrawing of local districts to help ensure that a particular party gets a majority of votes and House seats. In both parties, there are congressional districts that are set up by the states to keep the parties in power. The rigged system of redistricting allows politicians to choose their people rather than vice versa. That's right, with gerrymandering, the politicians choose their voters. The voters don't choose them. And that's, that's weird. It's back to front. It's like getting to your Uber and then your driver's in the back seat and he's like, stop driving, asshole, I'm late. <laughs> like, this chart from the Washington Post shows how gerrymandering works. Now, constitutionally, the power to draw district lines uh, belongs to the state governments, right? Usually, their legislatures uh, do the work, and that's normal. That's when they draw those districts in a fair and representative way. Then in a state where, let's say, Democrats won 60% of the vote, they would get 60% of the seats in that state. That sounds right. But the law defining what's fair is pretty unclear. So if a legislature wanted to rig the system for Democrats, it could draw the lines so that with only 60% of the votes, Democrats could get 100% of the seats. Or if they wanted to rig it for Republicans, they could do the complete opposite. Right? You draw some much more complicated lines and actually give the Republicans a majority, even though they only won 40% of the votes. Or if you draw the lines in a different way, you can get a dick. Yeah. <laughs> Which is also bad for democracy. <laughs> and here's the thing. This isn't just some fancy pixel penis theory. This has been happening in America in real life. One of the most extreme examples of gerrymandering is the congressional map drawn by North Carolina Republicans after 2010. It's a map that delivered the GOP an overwhelming 10-3 advantage in House seats by 2014, turning a roughly 50% statewide support into a 77% advantage. Good Lord. It's like they found the cheat code to elections. Gerrymandering is like up, down, up, down, A, B, select, start, boom! Republican majority, baby! <laughs> now, gerrymandering has been around for 200 years, but when lawmakers started using modern computing power to draw districts, they took it to the next level because that's what computers do, right? It's the same way how back in the day you were decent at stalking your ex, but now, thanks to computing power and social media, you can stalk your ex like a pro. <laughs> yeah, like, now it's not like, ah, uh, I think she might be there. It's like, oh, I know she's at an all-inclusive resort sipping my ties with Jeremy, who said he was just a friend! <laughs> but you know what? I don't even care, because I don't even follow her. <laughs> anyway, gerrymandering. Today, Lawmakers can draw a district so precise that it includes the voters that they want down to the block. And it results in some suspicious-looking district shapes. One commentator compared Maryland's third to a broken-winged pterodactyl. This is Illinois' fourth district. Stand it on end. And what does it look like? They call it the earmuffs. Observers say North Carolina's 12th district, straddling Interstate 85, is so narrow you could open your car doors and kill everybody in it. Wow. <laughs> that description got really dark. I feel like those maps are also a Rorschach test. It's like, what do you see? Earmuffs. And what do you see? An opportunity to murder people using my vehicle. <laughs> I think you need help, man. And like, who, who thinks like that? The national debt is so high, you could push your spouse off of it and no one would ever know. 